Welcome back to Team O'Neill. I'm Wyatt. What we're going to cover today are 10 sort of myths or misconceptions about driving, things people often say that just aren't true. Most of them, if you give them just a little thought, you realize that they're not actually grounded in reality. So number one, and these are in no particular order, just something you hear people say out there, if an animal walks out in the road, just run into it. I don't know what planet you live on where it might be okay to just run into anything that might be out in the road. You know, it sort of checks out, yeah, if it's a squirrel or a rabbit, but what if it's a deer? What if it's a moose? What if it's somebody's kid on a bicycle or chasing a ball out into the street or something like that? At what point are you going to have to actually brake and potentially swerve to avoid an obstacle? Really basic emergency braking and accident avoidance skills should be part of driver's ed. You know, hopefully if you're getting your license or you have your license, this is something that you can run through mentally as an exercise. Just, hey, brake in a straight line. Look where you want to go. Release the brakes and turn. Being able to brake fairly competently and avoid an obstacle in the road is a really basic skill. Uh, so hopefully we can start to get away from the idea of if there's something in the road, just run into it. Number two, and this is one that comes up in the comment section of our videos a lot, you know, drivers who come through the rally school and that kind of thing, ABS helps your car stop faster. That's a complete myth. ABS was never designed to help cars stop faster. That's not what it was ever for, even from the beginning. ABS is an anti-skid system to help you stop more safely without getting into a skid. But that has nothing to do with how quickly your car actually stops, how well you decelerate. The second part of that myth is kind of that only expert drivers or professionals can outperform an ABS system, and that's just kind of a joke. We see teen drivers and brand new novice drivers, uh, after a few laps, can outperform an ABS system, especially in the winter or on gravel or something like that. ABS leads to fairly long stopping distances, uh, and when you can disable that system and you learn how to use the brake pedal, uh, you can stop much more quickly. Number three, and it's another one that we see a lot, particularly on the internet, uh, again, relating to that experts only type of thing. Number three, left foot braking is an expert level skill, or only for race car drivers or something like that. The truth is that left foot braking is no harder than right foot braking. A lot of people naturally start braking with their left foot, uh, you know, just naturally when they start driving. If somebody doesn't tell them not to in the beginning, uh, they just go ahead and do it, and they've been driving around their whole lives left foot braking without a problem at all. Uh, it's simply a matter of muscle memory and what you're used to. If you've been driving for years with only using your right foot, sure, it's going to take a little bit of practice uh, to get your ankle working and get some sensitivity and feel with your left foot, uh, but that's really something that you could do fairly quickly. You know, in an afternoon, a few hours, 10 minutes of driving, your left foot can get much better at left foot braking. Number four, again, in no particular order, just one that we hear an awful lot. Don't spin the tires when you get stuck. No idea who's sort of propagating this one, uh, but if you do get stuck to the point where the vehicle is, you know, in the mud and the tires are spinning, the idea that you shouldn't spin them to try to continue going forward uh, is kind of just a joke. Here you are watching this video on YouTube, go ahead and watch some off-roading or anything with people getting stuck and you'll see that most of them spin the tires and dig down to better grip and drive right out of it, whether that's forwards or backwards or up a hill or whatever it might be. We see it a huge amount of the time in the winter, you know, you put one tire in the ditch or something and you need to spin those tires to get down to better grip, uh, to chew away at that loose surface and dig and bite and get that car to drive forward or backwards to get out of that situation. Are there some cases where you don't want to spin the tires? Sure, if you're out on a beach with a lot of tire pressure and you're spinning and just sinking down and getting stuck in, you know, very deep sand or something like that, I'm sure that's applicable, but many, many scenarios, you need to spin the tires to get yourself unstuck. Number five, and again, in just the order that they came to mind, you should be engine braking coming into corners. This is something that must have come out of, you know, Hollywood or whatever with showing people shifted and getting into low gears, you know, way before they get to a corner. Um, but what you'll find is engine braking isn't very effective braking at all. Racing drivers aren't using much engine braking to slow the vehicle down. The brake pedal in your car is, you know, 
10, 20 times more effective to slow the car down coming into a corner than you know any engine braking, even with a high compression engine or whatever you might have. Sure, engine braking is great to go down a long hill if the road is slippery. There's places on the street for sure to use engine braking, but approaching corners at high speed isn't really one of them. Number six, something that's super popular with kind of modern car culture, especially here in America, manual transmissions are better than automatics. You can certainly say that you prefer the driving experience of driving a manual transmission, but you would be incorrect to say that manual transmissions are better than automatics. There are some really terrible automatics where that would of course be true, but if you have the ability to manually shift, you know, in a sequential fashion, an automatic transmission and it holds up and it's pretty strong, that transmission is going to be better in basically every measurable metric than its manual counterpart would be. For all of the same reasons why most top race cars where the rules allow it at least are using sequential transmissions so that you can just brake coming into corners, go down in the gears as you need to, up in the gears, uh, whether that's with a one hand sort of a shifter or you know obviously the finger paddles. You are of course free to have that opinion that you prefer manual transmissions and maybe you'll never own an automatic, that's your choice. But if you had to pick one to actually be top of the pile, it probably wouldn't be a manual. Number seven, one that we run into an awful lot up at the driving school, particularly the winter driving classes, people driving modern cars, is just kind of the myth that modern active all-wheel drive systems are good for performance driving. False. You know, any of these modern cars that are using a clutch pack to control how much front versus rear drive you get uh, are going to be very unpredictable when you actually get to the limit. Can you do a track day with one? Sure. Can you drive them on the street a little bit quickly? Absolutely. But if you try to rally one or you take one out in the snow and try and slide around corners and have some fun or drift the thing or whatever it might be, all of those cars are going to behave very differently. The amount of front versus rear drive you get uh, controlled by that electronic clutch pack is based on the individual wheel speeds, your steering angle sensor, your throttle position, your brake position, the yaw sensors, uh, some of them whether the wipers are on or not. You know, they're all going to behave a little bit differently and in real time they're going to be making decisions to where you come around a corner when you get on the gas, sometimes it's going to spin the front tires more than the rears or vice versa. Can you slide those around and have a little bit of fun? Absolutely. Uh, but can you really commit to a corner and push it hard? No. Number eight, electric cars suck. Please, 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 before you even try to say that, go out and drive an electric car. There's nothing about the instant torque and acceleration that you get in electric cars that sucks. Sure, there are some logistic concerns with, you know, range and charging times and how many charging places you can get, whatever it might be, uh, but the actual driving experience of getting into an electric vehicle with a reasonable amount of power at least is excellent. Basically everything that you love about driving is still there except for maybe the noise. Because it's quiet, you can hear exactly what the tires are doing, when they're breaking loose, and when they're gripping really well, and what's going on at all four corners of the car. You're a lot more tuned into that. You can drive an electric car fast um, pretty easily, and it's a huge amount of fun to do. Number nine, you know, maybe this is something that just happens more here in America than around the world, but kind of the mentality that accidents happen. Accidents don't happen. That's just like a band-aid that you use to put on somebody's feelings after they've made a mistake. If your kid drops a plate, that's an accident. If your puppy poops on the floor, that's an accident. If you crash a car into something, you've crashed a car into something. When it really boils down to it, 100% of accidents are driver error. Either a bad decision was made that led to being in a situation that that driver shouldn't have been in at that time and a crash happened, or you know, a lack of skills or judgment or whatever it might have been. As drivers, it's on us to analyze it the best we can, get as much information out of that as we can, learn and grow and develop our skills and maybe practice things or whatever we might need to do as drivers to improve. The only way that's going to happen is if we get out of this, you know, accidents happen mindset. 
Number 10, end of the line, just to throw a fun one in there. A big myth, particularly here in America, driving barefoot is illegal. I don't know who's spreading this information, uh, but driving barefoot isn't illegal in any of the 50 states of America, at least. Uh, you know, check whatever country you're in. You know, if you're in New Zealand, perhaps, I don't know. Uh, but here in America, for whatever reason, parents, uh, teachers, as kids are going through driver's ed, somebody tells them it's illegal to drive barefoot, and that's just simply not the case. Not saying it's wonderful and you should drive barefoot all the time, but hey, that's on you. We do use it as a training tool sometimes. Again, if you're learning left foot braking or threshold braking or whatever it might be, trying to get smoother with the pedals and smoother with your driving, you can take your shoes off so that you can really feel the pedals and see what's going on uh, as you're acclimatizing to different vehicles maybe, or as a brand new driver learning some new skills. Uh, if you don't have shoes that allow you to have really good pedal feel, take the shoes off and work on the same skill set, then put the shoes back on, and you'll see you'll be able to do it much more easily. So that's all we've got for you today, kind of those 10 myths that are really common about driving in general. There are many more. If you know some funny ones that are simply not true, please add them in the comment section. We want to hear about them. If you're into driving related videos or you'd like to help kind of try and increase the standard of driving in general around the world, please take a look at our channel, consider subscribing, chime in in the comments. As you're out there in the world, just do your best to kind of spread good information to new drivers and more novice drivers and everything else. If you'd like to take a course with some expert instruction, check out teamoneal.com. We run skid control and drifting and rally style courses all year long up here in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. Be safe, have fun, and we'll catch you next time.